Everyone wants a better human experience. Everyone wants an easier way to do things or wants a more enjoyable experience in their daily lives. If someone or some company creates a thing with a better human experience in mind, people will want to use it more. And when many people adopt that new thing into their daily lives, that new thing may have just then changed an entire industry. In my lifetime, I've seen this happen again and again. From cassette tapes to CDs to music streaming, from renting movies from Blockbuster, then to renting them through mail, and then streaming movies online. From going to the retail store to buy something to buying things online. What do all these changes have in common? Someone or some team was able to create an offer a better human experience by removing as much friction as possible to help someone get to their intended goal. With cassette tapes, they can only fit a limited amount of songs per side per tape. CDs help lift that limit higher. And now music streaming has lifted that limit higher by letting you listen to an unlimited amount of songs. For renting movie entertainment, you would have to call up Blockbuster, see if they have the title in stock, drive over there, check out the movie, bring it back home, watch it, and then a couple days, bring it back by driving to the Blockbuster and returning it. Then Netflix came in and said, you can rent movies by mail, no need to go to a store. And now there's so many companies to choose from where you can just download, rent, or just watch instantly a movie online. The same thing with buying things at a retail store. You would have to drive to the store, buy the thing, and then come back. But now you can just buy it online and it gets shipped to your door. And now we're seeing this same shift in the auto industry, which is way overdue. Legacy automakers have always been focused more on money than what really matters, which is the whole human experience. Today, when you want to buy a traditional combustion engine car, you have to drive to the dealership, walk around the lot and find the car that you want, test drive it, negotiate a price, go through all the filing and form signing process, and then drive it home. The last time my wife and I bought an ICE car, it took about three hours for the whole process. And that was through lunch. So we were really hangry after that whole experience. But with car ownership, the experience doesn't end there. To keep the car maintained, you have to bring it back to the dealership service center every six months. To keep the car running, you have to take it to a gas station and fill up every week or so. And to get the latest tech or new safety features, you have to wait a year for the next model and buy a new car to start the whole process again. Now let's compare this to Tesla. To buy a Tesla, like a Model 3, you would go to tesla.com, go to custom order, Pick the version that you want, choose all your upgrades, then fill out the form and click place order. When your car is ready, a representative will email you and give you a date and time to stop on by the service center to pick up your car. And heck, Tesla will even pay for your Uber ride to the service center so you can pick up your car. As for the car maintenance, it says right here, change the cabin air filter every two years, tire rotation every 10 to 12,000 miles, flu brake fluid test every two years, and for the Model 3, every six years for the air conditioning service. That's it. To keep the car running, just plug it in at home every night. To get the latest tech and safety features, just let the car download and install them through Wi-Fi. Now, what I've just listed and compared isn't enough to change the auto industry, but it's a great start. What Tesla is really doing to change the auto industry is thinking about the whole human experience while using the car. When you get into a car made by a legacy automaker, you'll notice that there's a lot of buttons on the steering wheel, behind the steering wheel, and on the center console. And if that car has a touch screen, then that screen will have many different buttons across many different screens. Side note, each of these buttons and dials are what is called an interface. 
because you're interfacing with them. And all of these things put together is called a user interface or UI. I really don't understand why legacy automakers are adding as many buttons as possible to the experience. Driving is already a complicated experience. Adding more UI only makes it worse. The saying less is more is true for a lot of things. Now remember when I was watching the live stream of the Tesla Model 3 reveal event? And once that car came out, I was amazed. But when the cameraman took a shot of the interior of the car, I was blown away. All I saw was a steering wheel with two buttons and a big giant 15 inch screen in the center. That's it. I thought this is it. They understand and they're changing the game. And they're doing the same thing with the Cybertruck, the Tesla Semi, and the Roadster. They all have minimal buttons and big screens. When you have too many one function physical interfaces, you can't ever make a better experience for people once your product is out the door. Apple didn't make the first smartphone. What they did make was a better forward thinking human experience with a revolutionary user interface is the result of years of research and development. And of course, it's an interplay of hardware and software. Now, why do we need a revolutionary user interface? I mean, here's four smartphones, right? Motorola Q, the Blackberry, Palm Treo, Nokia E62, the usual suspects. And what's wrong with their user interfaces? Well, the problem with them is really sort of in the bottom 40 there. It's, it's this stuff right here. They all have these keyboards that are there whether you need them or not to be there. And they all have these control buttons that are fixed in plastic and are the same for every application. Well, every application wants a slightly different user interface, a slightly optimized set of buttons just for it. And what happens if you think of a great idea six months from now? You can't run around and add a button to these things. They're already shipped. So what do you do? It doesn't work because the buttons and the controls can't change. They can't change for each application, and they can't change down the road if you think of another great idea you want to add to this product. The best thing about digital screens is that when people want to create a better human experience, people are able to just download that experience and install it on their screen. Same goes with the Tesla UI. With the new software update, a new experience can be downloaded overnight. With software updates, Tesla has been able to add so many new features to the car, many of them for free. Oh, and fart mode. When it comes to creating things, I always like to say, it's easy to make something hard to use. It's hard to make something easy to use. And Tesla is definitely taking the hardest path. If you continue to make tech that doesn't remove as much friction as possible, it will create a bad human experience. May it be a mobile app, a website, a gadget, or even a car. People will choose not to use it and go for that other thing that will make their life more enjoyable because everyone wants a better human experience. Thanks for watching this video. Now I know this is a different type of video that I normally post on my channel, but I wanted to do something different this year and talk about more things that I'm passionate about, not just Webflow and the no code movement. So yeah, let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. Uh, thanks again for watching and as always, make the web beautiful together. See ya.